for a small business assistance program and to take action as necessary. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Enfield Town Council that is cognizant of the conditions and prerequisites for the state financial assistance imposed by the state of Connecticut and that the filing of an application for state financial assistance by the town of Enfield in the amount not to exceed $2.5 million is hereby approved. The council further directs Ellen Zaposasu, the town manager, to execute and file such application with Connecticut DECD to provide such additional information to execute such other documents as may be required to, to execute an assistance agreement with the state if such an agreement is offered to execute any amendment, decisions and revisions thereto, and to act as an authorized representative of the town of Enfield. So moved. Uh, Councillor Mangini. Second. Second. Uh, second, uh, John, Councillor Santanella. Mr. Uh, Mayor, just point of order, Councillor Despard is here. He was not here for roll call, but I think the record should reflect that he's here. Okay, Councillor Despard is here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Welcome, uh, Matt. Hey, how's it going? Sorry, I was had some uh, technology issues. Okay. Well, we just finished the uh, the resolution. We had a first and a second. And uh, any discussion on this? Uh, if if no discussion, we can go right into roll call. I have questions on it. There's <laughs> questions from Councillor Pisner here in the room. Okay. So should we get this 1.75 or, or the 2.5 million? Is it only going to be spent? in certain areas where how will it be dispersed so this grant from the community investment fund is for all businesses so it's not just thompsonville and north thompsonville however they are getting priority treatment because of the qualified census trucks that being said businesses in hazardville can apply businesses along route 5 can apply they just have to meet the state definition, which is under 100 employees. So, for example, Kohl's, Stop and Shop, places like that, Home Sense, Ocean State, those are not eligible. It is geared towards small businesses. The definition um, sits within the state law and it's under 100. Okay. How does it, how does it coincide with ARPA funds? If they got ARPA, can they still yeah. apply for this? We are going to... Um, dovetail the two projects. So many of you know that the Economic Development Commission is working to create the parameters for small business assistance, uh, similar to what I think they're planning, which is, did you get PPP? Did you get assistance from the state? We would be asking businesses, did you get ARPA? However, there is an opportunity to weave some of this together. Some of these funds could actually be used for technical assistance so, for example, the Eclectic Peacock, who's up on Upper North Main uh, Route 5, yeah. they want to do facade improvement. We could actually hire someone to coordinate facade improvement for anyone who's interested in that. We could coordinate streetscape. We can coordinate historic preservation efforts because most of the buildings in Thompsonville are actually listed as contributing structures. So there's a really a wide bandwidth of what we can do with this money. Um, we had previously decided to not apply, but because of Tom Arnone pretty much demanding that we apply, we took another look at it. We are not ready for the capital projects side of this grant. We are ready for small business assistance because of the train platform, because of Ronnie Salas, because of Impact Residential, because of Pat Tallarita, because of so many things that are happening in that area. We can create that narrative and then translate that business piece to the other commercial sectors as well. So we'll have a lot of work to do if we get the money. And we are clearly saying up to 2.5 million. We'll take whatever they give us in terms of startup funds. And this can go directly. They, we can, the money will come to the town of Enfield if we choose to do a business assistance program for startups, like say a smoothie company wants to open in Thompsonville next to the um, you know the place or a restaurant or an expansion we can give money directly it can be startup it could be expansion it could be anything which is the beauty of of applying in the first round I think we're going to have a lot of latitude if we're awarded any of this money 
So just to be clear on it, then we would set parameters. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to say to somebody, oh, we're going to give you 10,000 or 50,000. No. Is this money going to get paid back in any way? So we have not answered that part of the grant yet. We do believe that we might model this after the Enfield home. Uh, what is the name of it? The home First rehabilitation home. Yeah. home buyer. So um, in that program, there's a forgiveness piece where for every year you stay in your home, 10% of your loan is forgiven. That is very attractive to the federal government for Thompsonville and North Thompsonville because of their census tract numbers. So they may be eligible for special consideration. Um, but the rest of it would most likely be a very low interest loan that if they sold the business or something like that would get repaid and then put back into the revolving fund for other businesses to use. How would they repay it? I'm just curious. Upon sale of the business is what they, they would pay us back. Yes. The town would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And individuals would come and f now could individuals fill out something for this grant now or no? No, it's municipalities or nonprofits. That's what in, I thought. In partnership with um, municipalities and or development corporations. So, for example, the Tobacco Valley Corporation is applying on behalf of the Enfield Housing Authority. How would something like St. Pat's Roof, the, the, the um, AMP store, how would they get involved in something like this? Would they? Could they get involved in something like this? I know I, Judy's going to ask me, so yeah. I'm asking. Um, I think yeah. they are a better fit for the nonprofit ARPA assistance, but okay. they would be eligible for this because once of the, the money is given. And what are, do we have a outreach. timeline? Once once you put this grant in, yeah, it's a timeline. They will tell us in November, and okay. then we would receive funds. Um, starting funds would be released in December, and then believe it or not, the second round of community investment fund uh, is. You, you apply in January. So they are going to be doing two rounds for the next several years. So we really need to be in a position to take advantage of this, especially with the train platform specifically. The other thing that we can have a conversation on later is the need to hire and contract with not a permanent employee, but a grant writer. There is so much money flowing through the state and federal government. Um, all of our department heads are sitting in on professional associations. There's money to be had. And we are not positioned to apply for some of the larger pools because we just don't have the staff. So before everybody starts snapping up these independent grant writers, we should really have a policy conversation about whether that's a good use of ARPA funds to hire someone similar to what we did to try to fix our purchasing problems. So future thought. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just very briefly, I'm really glad that we got this application and thank you guys for putting in so much work. Um, this is, I, I really look forward to the next year. I mean, 175 million, um, I think we'll have really some some great proposals together by then. I mean, infrastructure, affordable housing, there's really a lot of flexibility, but thank you guys for putting this together for this time around. It's exciting. Thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Scotty. Four. Councilor Jesper. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against. Okay, item number three. <laughs> A quick discussion to discuss the possible change of meeting dates for August and September meetings and to take any action um, if necessary. Um, uh, Ellen, could you um, explain? Sure. Um, so in looking at the movement from August 1st to August 8th and some of the items that are coming up that you as a town council need to look at specifically, the registrars of voters redistricting plan, which needs to be advertised and then a public hearing needs to be held. Uh, I was thinking that it might make sense to do an additional meeting in August on August 29th. And that would mean that you would not have to do the meeting the day after Labor Day, which I know is really hard for people who might be going away or even trying to get together as a caucus over a holiday weekend. And then you would resume your regular meeting schedule on September 19th. That gives enough time for the department heads who have uh, 
things, especially the public safety referendum, which is another item that you're going to have to decide by the end of August as to whether you want to pursue that for the ballot. So my suggestion, if you'd like to consider having meetings in August on the 8th and the 29th and eliminating your September 6th meeting, resuming your regular schedule for September 19th, which would be your normal second Monday meeting of the month. Okay, thank you. I love that idea for the record. Well, I, I think it's a it's a very good idea considering we have five Mondays in, in August and that Tuesday after a holiday is uh, very difficult to get everybody uh, together to caucus uh, and be ready for that meeting. So uh, I think the proposal um, is, is a good one. I'm in okay. favor. It definitely helps out our registrars who came to see me this morning because they're going to be very busy on the night of August 8th for when you set the public hearing, but they would be available to come and explain and answer questions about the options that you have for August 29th where you would actually have to vote. Okay, thanks. Any further discussion on this? So can I just ask if question do we need to do a resolution for this or is it just something that we can agree to do I look our dates are set by resolutions yeah I mean we could do the motion in the form of a resolution I did look at policy and procedures and I didn't see any reference to this within the rules we can do a resolution to go from the first to the eighth no I don't know I'm doing here I'm just saying we just changed that we just changed the first to the eighth and that was with an email from Bob asking us right so wouldn't that be the same thing? Well, I I I don't find any um, you know issue with that, and just saying that these are what our dates are going to be. You we know, just I don't know. Know. right? And, it's not. and if you vote accordingly tonight, the August 29th meeting would be a regular meeting because we have enough time to notice that. Uh, the August 8th meeting is a special meeting because we didn't notice it within 30 days of the change. Well, I, I'm good with it. Okay. It also gives us a nice uh, group of time because all of the subcommittee meetings are being scheduled and a lot of that is going to have to come back to the town council for discussion as well. So it gives us a couple of full weeks that we can look at everybody's schedules and try to get all of those meetings done. Okay. All right, so are we ready to move forward with that? Do we need a, a, a vote on this or can we just a, agree to move these dates as stated? I think someone should make a motion to approve the date changes as presented. All right, I'll, I'll make that motion uh, to make a motion. A that we will change these particular dates in August and September. Uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second it? Yes, I second it. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, we can uh, vote on that. Okay, why don't we just do an all in? We could probably just do an all in favor for the yeah. uh, consensus. All, all, yeah. all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, all in favor. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number four, discussion resolution request for transfer of funds for renovating the building inspection office, $6,411. Uh, resolve that in accordance with chapter six, section eight of the town charter, the following transfer is hereby made uh, to municipal facilities, furnitures and fixtures, 6,411 from Municipal Facilities Other Equipment, $6,411. Certification, I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of July 15, 2022. John A. Wilcox, Director of Finance, and approved by Ellen Zappusasso, the Town Manager, on uh, the 7-19-22. So moved. Any, any, oh, so moved, uh, Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second. We have a second. I think that was Councillor Mangini. Councillor Mangini, second. I'll second it though. Okay, 
Deputy Mayor Sakala, thank you. Any discussion on this? Um, Sens sensing none. Oh, no, I have one. Again, it's me. Great. Um, so it's saying here that we have, uh, we, we still have money left over. We still haven't gotten a number as far as what is actually left over that we can spend here. It's, it's, it says here excess funds available in the capital account. So we, we I had asked the last meeting, what do we have in excess funds available? You were, and yeah. I never got anything on that. We don't know yet. The auditors are here and we're hoping to have that number by Friday. But this is a between line item transfer. The reason, um, so when we said we were going to do a special meeting, I did extend a courtesy ask to all the department heads if they had pressing business that couldn't wait until August 8th, which is the items that you see, a couple grant deadline, uh, grant deadline for Cindy and some transfers. And this one, the $6,400 one, um, they want to lock in a price because there's an anticipated price increase with that vendor. So that's why Donald put that forward for tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Prasadi. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. That's eight in favor and none against. Item five, discussion resolution, request of transfer of funds for the roof replacement at Eli Whitney and Hazardville Memorial Schools, $92,020. And this is once again, one of the uh, items that uh, town manager just talked about. Resolve that in accordance with chapter six, section eight F of the town charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Grant funded projects from grant funded projects, revenue, Hazardville Memorial roof, 31,570 to Hazard Road Memorial Roof Construction Services, uh, $48,570. And grant funded projects revenue, Eli Whitney Roof, $28,242 to uh, Eli Whitney Roof Construction Services, $43,450. And grant Funded projects revenue capital fund transfer of $32,208. Uh, capital and non recurring fund from the town management study, other professional services, $32,208. To the town management study transfer to capital, $32,208. Certification I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of July 19, 2022. John A. Wilcox, Director of Finance, approved by Ellen Zappu Sasso, 7-19-22. So moved. Uh, Councilor Mangini. Second. Uh, second, uh, who was that? Me. Oh, Councilor Santanella, thank you. Uh, any discussion on this? Yes, I have a question, if I may. Go ahead. Um, to our Mayor, the Town Manager. If I'm understanding this correctly, both of these projects are underway and are, they will be completed by the beginning of the next school year. Is that correct, Ellen? Um, as of right now, they are on schedule, as are the two driveway replacement projects at Barnard and at ESS, despite a couple of little things happening at both of those. Those both are scheduled to be ready for the election on August 9th and these projects shortly thereafter. They're making really great progress. All right, so by making these transfers, we will be able to complete the roofs for both schools? Yeah, it's on schedule. These are just change orders that have come up in the, in the process. I believe that joint facilities had these last night that they discussed. Okay, yeah, thank you. Andy, there's a there were several change orders that we discussed last night and approved. So barring any more unforeseen either wood rot or whatever they find, um, then there might be some more change orders coming, but hopefully not. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you. Um, okay, Sheila, roll call. 
Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Thank you so long. Councilor Despard had to leave. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. That's seven in favor, none against. Okay, item six, discussion resolution. The resolution to transfer funds for the Child Youth and Family Services, the Enfield Youth Council, $600. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter. The following transfer is made to youth, the, uh, Child Youth and Family Services, advertising $600 from the Child Youth and Family Services, miscellaneous revenue, $600. Certification, I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of July 20th, 2022. Johnny Wilcox, Director of Finance, and approved by Ellen Zappo Sasu, uh, July 19th, uh, 2022. So moved. So moved. Councilor Santanella and <laughs> second Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussion on this? Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Kisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Seven in favor and none against. Okay, and the, and the last item of discussion to entertain a request from the town manager's office to waive the indoor pool residence fees for open swim during the month of July. But I also would want to state that maybe we can waive this fee uh, until school opens up. So we're looking at uh, to, through at least mid August. That That's my recommendation on that. And, and I'm in agreement uh, to waive the dollar fee for uh, residents to use the annex pool. I think Thank that's you. that's very good, Bob. I, I have to agree. I think giving our residents the opportunity to fully enjoy the summer, um, especially the kids, it's, it's really helpful to to you know waive these fees. So I definitely would support that. So just so we're clear the proposal is to waive the 50 cents per child one dollar per adult but we were going to leave the non-resident fees which are a dollar and a dollar fifty in place um with the heat wave we kind of had an internal conversation about no pool and really not a lot of cooling opportunities especially within thompsonville but with the magic bus being free uh, this actually gives people an opportunity to hop on a bus go to the annex use the pool and then be able to come home on Saturdays. There is no bus on Sundays, but they, if they can get themselves there, they would have an opportunity to swim from noon until four. So from a diversity, equity, and inclusion standpoint, I thought it was an important piece, but also from a revenue standpoint, it is very, it's, it's a non-factor. They collected $53.50 last weekend. So it's not like the recreation division is relying upon this as a revenue driver. So that's why we thought that it would be appropriate to bring to you tonight. Okay. Uh, any other uh, comment? So, yeah. Go ahead, Gina. I would just, I'm, that's fine. I'm in support, and I would just ask that if we're going to do it, let's put some sort of um, press out there about it. So what people it know it, it kind of exactly what um, exactly what you just said, Ellen. So people can get on the magic carpet, it's free, get to the pool, it's free. So if we can put some press out, if we're gonna pass it, I think that would be great. Yeah, we'll do so as soon as it's approved. So do we have to make a motion on this also? Uh, okay, so we're gonna be making a motion to waive the uh, 50 cent and a dollar for residents and to keep the non-resident fees as is and also uh, to allow uh, the magic carpet bus um, to bring people there uh, to the annex. Yep. That's, that's already in place. place. That's already that's to, in place. Just a point of clarification. So that's until school starts. Did you have a date in mind? Um, 
September. Yeah, we could do August 31st, September yeah. 1st. I would say go right to the end of uh, of August. Okay. Yeah, so August 31st would be good. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. That's second by Councillor Hopkins. Um, let's have a uh, Sheila roll call. Or, or actually, actually, no, no roll call. Let's just do it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. I think we're all in a, a agreement here. All right. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, motion to adjourn. Councillor Mangini in a second. Second. Uh, Councillor Pisner, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Okay, well, uh, all in favor, uh, thank you very much. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.